Well, welcome friends joining us online, especially uh, we are so glad that you have found your way through the interwebs to join us for worship. And welcome everyone to Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Whether you have been traveling wildly or hunkering down at home or just trying to make it through the day, we are so glad that you are here. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are uh, continuing to do our best to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and the Delta variant. So please remember we have options for social distancing in the sanctuary and also Zoom and YouTube and Facebook continue to be options for sharing and worship with us. There will be a vaccination clinic at our sister congregation, Bethany UCC, uh, on Wednesday, September 1st from 10 to 1130 AM. Uh, so there will be flyers coming out soon if you want to share those widely, particularly with folks in the South End that you might know, um, and they can share it as well. We want to get the word out as much as possible. Uh, the life of our church continues to move forward, and we will have our confirmation interest meeting. So anybody who's got kids in the age range from 12 to 15, uh, we're going to be talking about what the confirmation process this year is going to look like. Um, and similarly, we have a new members interest meeting. Several of you have been hanging out with us for a while, and we'd like to make you official. Um, if you would like the same, then uh, we invite you in two weeks, uh, the 29th, we'll have a meeting in um, probably the conference room, which is the room directly back there, unless there's a ton of us, and then we'll move to another place. Um, and uh, we can talk about what it means to be a member at Emmanuel UCC. It's a good time to ask all your questions. Uh, you bring some doozies for us, see how we do. We are continuing to collect toilet paper for Wayside Mission. I encourage you to imagine that it is March of 2020 and go buy that toilet paper and bring it on in because uh, folks at Wayside Mission, it, it's a constant need as you could imagine. Uh, we will be continuing Bible study led by uh, our student pastor this week and next, uh, Joseph Jacobs. Um, and uh, happy hour, I think, is still on Ooh. this week. Yes, led by the incomparable Brian Fantoni. Um, and uh, so I hope that you will find ways to join with us uh, in fellowship and study and prayer. I will be leaving after today's service um to go on a two-week vacation um and uh so joseph <laughs> yes there's some cheers in the back because the staff knows i need it um, <laughs> the, uh, joseph will be on call for pastoral emergencies and he's got some other backup folks to help him as well um so please if you are in need of a pastor don't hesitate to call uh, we are here to help, even if I am not physically present. I'll be in uh, Southern Kentucky the first week and at the beach the second week. So uh, pray for us to be safe and to enjoy that, if you would appreciate it. Today is our final Sunday in this travel series we've been doing, Quest, uh, journeying and thinking about a traveler's mindset as a way to approach our spirituality. And we'll have one more little video testimony from Rick Steve. So I hope that you will enjoy that. And then even better, during our reflection time, we will have your photos and a few interesting videos too. So watch the screens for that part uh, after the sermon. I believe that's all the news that's fit to say up here. So uh, I will let Joseph lead us in our opening prayer. Well, good rainy Sunday morning, everyone. <laughs> so glad to be here with everyone, despite the cloudy weather. So friends, let us pray. Sojourning God, your spirit exists everywhere on every path, inviting us to move with curiosity and compassion toward each other. May we see that our home paths are the, fam the unfamiliar paths for someone else. With renewed compassion, open our hearts for hospitality so that in our welcoming, 
we will grow together in peace, expand our chances for love, and deepen understanding right where we are. Nudge and guide us, we pray. Amen. Now please rise in body and spirit to worship God in song. remain standing, please, and join me in the statement of faith, which, as Rachel reminded me this morning, is not really a testimonial. It is a testimonial, not a test of faith. So it is found in the back of our hymnal, and uh, please join me as we recite that. We believe in God, the eternal spirit, who is made known to us in Jesus, our brother, and to whose deeds we testify. God calls the worlds into being, creates humankind in the divine image and sets before us the ways of life and death. God seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. God judges all humanity and all nations by that will of righteousness declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, God has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and exiling the whole creation to its creator. God bestows upon us the Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, and binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. God calls us into the church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of the whole human family, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. God promises to all who trust in the gospel, forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, the presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing in eternal life in that kingdom, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto God. Amen.
be seated. <laughs> Got to be careful when standing under the cross. <laughs> the shore of the Sea of Galilee was the place where Jesus called the disciples away from their familiar lives and their roles into an adventure, a journey that would change their lives and our world forever. After his crucifixion, the disciples returned there to the water, to what they knew. But can you imagine? It would never be the same again. And it was there that the resurrected Christ met them again. He offered them comfort through hospitality, a meal of fish on the shoreline. He meets us even now at these waters. And so as we offer our confession, we remember that we do so in the context of a God whose love was so great that God became flesh and dwelt among us and offered love to all the world, grace to all the world. So let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always been ready to travel when you call. We have not always loved our neighbors as ourselves through what we have done and left undone. Forgive us when we forget your hospitality and the call to extend it to others. Guide us as we seek to turn around toward greater love. Lead us to travel in your ways. Amen. Know this, friends. Jesus' welcome is always present. The water everywhere we meet it, whether it is in China or Australia or right here in Kentucky, this water reminds us that the life-giving presence of God is always with us, ready to refresh and forgive. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Have a special treat today. The wonderful Pat Walton is going to play a hymn that is a favorite of many, Just As I Am.
Good morning, everybody. Brian Fantoni. I belong to most of the people in this first front pew. Um, I want to thank uh, Pat and Rachel and Samantha and Holly and Joseph um, for letting me be a liturgist. I know when they get to me on the list, they've gone through everybody else three or four times uh, because they're always concerned that they're not exactly sure what's going to happen when I'm a liturgist, which, let's be honest, is kind of exciting. Um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, with that said, I want to go ahead and get to the scripture, which is a very easy one. It's um, gardening of ice and the 11th commandment. It is from chapter uh, John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. You'll very, sound very familiar to you if you've sung in any choirs. I am the vine, you are the branches is uh, what, 35 of them, 100 hymns or it's crazy. So anyway, um, I am the vine, I'm the true vine and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will bear even more fruitful. You are already chosen because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commands and remains in him in his love. I've told you this that you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no other than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends and if you do not if you do what I command I no longer call you servants because if a servant does not know of his master's business Instead, I call you my friends for everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in the name of the father will be given to you. This is my command, love each other. I love it when Brian is liturgist because that means also sometimes I get to recruit him for things like children's message because who else is better than this? So as Rachel said, while we're in red, we're going to be doing some a few things different. One of them is I'm going to have all the kids stay where you are because we're all unvaccinated because we're tiny and this way it keeps everybody safe. But this one is for every child of God in the room. But we're going to start with the little ones and I'm going to have Brian come up here and help me. So who has been to a baseball, soccer, football, any game they did, the wave? What's the wave? Mm, right? So this one, just, just my kids. If you, if you consider yourself one of my kids, you get to do this. We're going to start on this side and go this side. Nobody else do anything. Ready? But so my Swift girls, you ready? You're going to start. Ready? Do you know the wave? You know the wave, right? So you all start and you have to go, whoo, and then the next person goes, and then it goes all the way and it waves all the way down this way. So your job, when I point to you, is just to stand up and do this. Can you do that? They can't see you on the video, so it's fine. Ready? Ready? Right, I'm, I'm looking at you. Ready? One, two, go. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, 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 there. Okay, it was kind of. Now everyone has to do it all together. 
because they need a little bit of help, okay? So I know my Ted Platner has done a few waves in his lifetime. Just a couple at a couple of baseball games is my guess. Ready? So this side, we're going all the way around, and then you all fit yourselves in wherever you want to. Okay, ready? You all? Ready, ready, ready? Go! Everybody, everybody, oh, look at that! That was beautiful! That is how a wave is supposed to happen, because you can't, if it was just me and Brian, and he went, huh, and I went, huh, oh, that's boring. We don't get a whole lot. But when you do that, or you do it all on a whole stadium, it's so much cooler, right? And it's like, everyone has a sense of accomplishment when they get to do it, because it actually made it around the stadium, which when I've done that, it was pretty cool when it actually happened. I got to be part of it. But if I was just the guy going, meh, and nobody else joined me, that's not fun. It's kind of just crazy a little bit. I also have a shadow. Did you notice? <laughs> so to, he, he can do the wave all day. Thank you, though. You're great. <laughs> so with the vine, the branches, we talk about them all the time and that Christ is our vine that connects all of us together. And we're all the fruits. But if you have one blueberry, it's one blueberry. But if you have bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of blueberries, guess what you could do? Feed bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of people. So the more we had to do together, the more we get to spread God's love. And Brian just read it. The one thing that Jesus told us was to go love one another. And we do that better when we're together. Because sometimes it's hard to show the big, big, bigness of God's love all by my little bitty self. But when I take a youth group or some college kids on a work trip, and I have a whole group with me, and we get to do a whole bunch of things for a lot of people, it's bigger than I can ever do by myself. So even though I'm part of this vine and branches thing, I'm just one lonely little vine and little branch over here connected to my vine. But if I get everybody together, we have so many more people that can do so much more good stuff and do so much more of God's love to everybody we meet. So like the wave, we got to do it together. And we'll have to figure it out along the way because it's been different this last year. And I think it's going to be continue to be a little bit different. But we love people really, really well. We do because we had the best example ever in Christ. So please join me in prayer, kids of all ages, and we'll ask God to help us along this journey. Gracious and loving God, thank you for every single branch along this vine that you have created for us. Thank you for helping us work together. And sometimes when we aren't strong enough to hold onto the vine, everybody else does it for us until we get our strength back. Help us continue to be the strongest branches that we can and keep growing and spreading your love to everyone we meet, wherever we meet them along the way. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So for this final Quest worship series, we will have video testimony travel writer Rick Steves, whose faith travels with him across the continents on video. I, but I'm lucky because on my very first trip, Tammy, when I was just a 14 year old kid, my parents took me to see the relatives in Norway. And I was not only ethnocentric, I was egocentric. I mean, as you can imagine, a 14 year old kid who had never been anywhere. And I was in a park, I'll never, this was, I just so, it's so interesting to think back on it. I was in a park behind the palace in Oslo, it's the Frogner Park, and it was filled with families out on a sunny afternoon. And I, I remember my parents were just loving me inexplicably. And I just, I knew my mom and dad didn't have a lot of money. They had never been to Europe before. They had compromised hugely in their travels in order to take their son along and expose me to all of this. They were just loving me. I mean, just flat out crazy loving me. And I looked out in that park and it, uh, I still remember to this day, it was speckled like some sort of a idyllic Monet painting with all these other parents loving their kids as much as my parents loved me. And it occurred to me right then and there that, oh my goodness, this world, I never realized it, but this world is home to literally billions of equally precious, just as precious as little 14 year old Rick, equally precious children of God. And for me to be burdened with that little bit of understanding has been a wonderful blessing because it just reminds me of the richness of this planet. And it makes it so easy to see that we're all family 
and again, comes back to that very simple appreciation of, of our relationship with our with our heavenly Father. I mean, this is our creation. We're all children of God, and when we travel, we're celebrating the family. Friends, would you pray with me? God, as we are traveling this strange road, whether we are doing it from our homes or on actual roads, we ask that your presence and your transformative spirit be with us in all ways. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, for this final quest series or sermon, I went to some of the most avid travelers uh, in my life. And I wanted to know how has this lifestyle, and these are people who live a lifestyle of travel, not necessarily on yachts like you might imagine, but they make it a point in their world to travel. And I asked them how this has changed their lives for good. I first want to tell you the story of somebody who I'll call Lauren. Um, she's a friend of mine, and she had recently signed up for her second stint in an international teaching program. Uh, she had served one stint in one country and now was signing up to go to another one in Southeast Asia. And she left in January of this year. You might remember that in January, uh, vaccinations were not quite yet available. Um, and so she traveled to Southeast Asia in basically a hazmat suit that was required uh, and then had to quarantine for two weeks in a very unair conditioned hotel in the tropics. And all of that was to get to do what she loves, which is to teach English to people in another culture and learn even more from them as she experiences and learns about their cultures. She loved being in Southeast Asia, trying new foods, seeing the sights, learning the history, soaking in the differences with a, a sense of adventure. Sadly, three and a half months into what was supposed to be a year long experience, she had a medical emergency had to have emergency surgery. And as the doctors treated her there, they found that she had a potentially very serious medical condition and would need to come home. And so she had to quarantine for two more weeks before she was allowed on a plane and then fly home and then quarantine two more weeks before she could go to the doctor here. And then finally in July, she was able to begin medical treatment. When I asked if anything about her a travel experience still stuck with her back here in her life in the States. I kind of expected her to say, you know, I've really developed a taste for duck. Uh, but she said, even though I was in Southeast Asia for only a short time, I was sort of infused with a more Buddhist outlook on life, not outwardly or obviously, but more of a mindset, that sense of detachment and surrender to what is. And she said it made the departure easier to swallow somehow. And she said that that mindset is still helping her as she waits for test results and next steps in treatment. She said, I think my landlady slipped it to me in one or more of our visits. I also talked to Deborah, who spent two years in the Peace Corps in a fishing village in Uganda, helping with public health education. While there, she met someone who seemed to be her complete opposite, but who became one of her dearest friends. Her name was Massey. My friend is a white American Christian woman who was in her 20s at the time with no kids or marriage. Massey was an African Muslim woman who was HIV positive, a widow, a parent to six children, single parent, uh, and in her 50s. Deborah says, we should not have been friends. And yet, 
in our interactions, we, we found a shared sense of humor, basic sensibilities about life, and a delight in each other. And we became good friends. When you meet someone who is different in so many ways, she said, but with whom you can still develop such a bond, you start to realize how little those things matter. During Ramadan, even though Deborah did not fast, she made it a point every evening to break the fast with Massey, which is a, a ceremonial kind of moment. They would have cups of porridge together and enjoy each other's company. And she said, because I spent so much time sitting in her seamstress slash fishing tackle shop, there's a combo you don't hear too often, on the edge of Lake Victoria, all the people who were others came to her for counsel and for needs, she said, and they slowly became my people, despite my intrinsic biases. When I asked what has changed in her because of this relationship, she said, you know, in this time of racial awareness, I'm checking my biases more. It doesn't eliminate the biases, but it does give me another way to look at them. She said, I also got such a different sense of connectedness in Uganda. And this is one of the things that uh, Rick Steves is talking about. She said, there, everyone just has a 10 foot by 10 foot square room. And that's like all you have as your house. And all the rest of your life is in community with one another. She said, and they just wrapped me up into their little soul sister community. And she felt welcomed and loved. When you travel, she said, you allow yourself to become vulnerable and dependent on others in a way that you haven't been before. And you have to make those relationships in order to survive. As the gospel writer John might say, when you travel, you have to realize that you are not the vine, but merely a branch, utterly dependent on a much wider love than you could ever embody in yourself. Rick Steves has a quote about travel that says, my travels have taught me to have a healthy skepticism toward those who peddle fear. And in so many cases, I've learned that the flip side of fear is understanding. And so the gospel passage from John draws on that deep interconnection and understanding that we all share and can learn more about in the process of traveling that we are part of one vine, that we are to love one another because what affects one affects all. John's ultimate premise, as you might recall, is famously stated in chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In order that the branches might fully know their source of life. When we forget our source of life, the Christ who loved the outcast, the poor, those unwelcome in the temple because they had been deemed unclean or somehow unholy, when we forget that Christ, our branch begins to wither. We, in a wealthy nation with relative comfort as compared to most of the world, are most at risk for this kind of withering, for forgetting that we are not self-reliant. And travel, whether it's by airplane or book, or walk through a different neighborhood in our own city, helps us remember that the world is so much wider than our daily lives, that there is so much more that God loves just as much as God loves each of us. By staying connected to our true source of life, we are transformed into bearers of boundless love, even for those different from ourselves. And we find an ability to more fully love God, to more fully understand God, and to love our neighbor and even ourselves with greater love. The fruit that comes from this vine, the fruit that lasts, is the fruit that is shared and multiplied in community. We are a global community. I think we realize that more than ever before as the veneer of smooth systems has been peeled off by the pandemic, whether our favorite fast food joint is out of ketchup packets 
or we can't buy a car because the whole thing is done except for this one microprocessor that's made in a factory in Korea and there's a shipping problem and they can't get it here. Or the undocumented workers who butcher our beef have been shut down by a COVID outbreak and now the supermarket shelves are bare. We are much more aware now that this vine is all woven together. And we realize now more than ever that our health depends upon others caring for themselves through vaccination and mitigation measures. Our company's productivity depends on whether childcare workers get paid enough to stay in their jobs. Our planet's survival and whether some individual's house floods or burns in a wildfire depends on whether we can muster the political will to curb carbon emissions in every area of life. This last year and a half, whether we left our hometown or not, we each went on an unexpected journey of vulnerability and interdependence as we navigated and continue to navigate the pandemic. We all became travelers mostly unwittingly so. And here we are in this caravan together, trying to find our way through and depending on one another. And when we return from travel, and God, please help us return quickly from this COVID jaunt, we have the opportunity to grow spiritually from these experiences. We can connect to the vine and not just our own branch. We can drink the same nourishing water as those on the other end of the vine, and we can wither or become stronger with them. I believe like Lauren's newfound Buddhist mindset, if we can keep this traveler's mindset with us, it will help us with some of the harder parts of the journey. If we keep a spirit of discovery, adventure, exploration, a willingness to, to see setbacks as challenges that we can rise to, a pride in our ability to have dug deep and found a strength we didn't know was there, a willingness to ask for help, even if it's from strangers or we're afraid we'll get the language wrong. These things build resilience and also help us to be more connected to the vine, more nourished by our, beyond our little branch. We might get not only the difficulties of life, but also the deeper joys. Maybe it would help next time we're in a hospital bed or relying on assistance from a caregiver or attending a school board meeting to treat it with a traveler's mindset. Who are these people you are encountering? What do they love and care deeply about? How is hospital food like foreign cuisine? And what would you write about it if you were Rick Steves? This sense of adventure might help us relax a little into the stress of life. Be willing to reach beyond our usual paths to be enthralled, to have fun, to find new relationships that feed us in ways we didn't know were needed. The series has reminded us to savor, to wonder, to love the world and its people, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And perhaps the loving ourselves part of that is about creating moments that nurture us spiritually so that we can give of ourselves freely and gladly with passion. We can be our own healthy branch of the vine, bearing fruit that helps nourish this world with the love of our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. For our time of reflection today, we will invite you to think about returning home, returning to business as usual, but with a different mindset one that takes into account what we have learned in our travels. Perhaps you've developed a journaling habit during this time, that would be wonderful. But there are some journal uh, reflection questions on the back of your bulletin, and we'll put them up on a slide here, but also as a bonus attraction on the slide are your photographs, your memories, your powerful experiences of travel. 
It is the many branches of the vine that are part of this church. So as the music plays, you're invited to simply savor and enjoy the photos, but you may also reflect on what feels important to remember about this series of quest that can enrich the journey of your life each day. Have you felt a shift in some kind of attitude? Is there something that is calling you because of this journey? Maybe you have a new sticker to carry with you. It says, always explore to remind me, even in a staff meeting, that we are travelers. Does not begin around the world. It's always flowing, and I am stepping in. We are stepping in. We are praying with those in distant places, different languages and faces. Every hour. things before the doxology um i wanted to point out that rachel will be having her birthday while she's on vacation um, that doesn't mean you can't text her endlessly on her birthday i mean just stupidly every hour um to wish her a happy birthday even though she's gonna be enjoying time off from the church she should always know we're here for her um also i think we should pray for rachel who's going to go on a vacation with two very young children and her wife and that's a challenge. Um, do you want to bring up something sad news that I did learn this morning? Andrew Hoffman is now taller than me. Um, so that's another of our youth who has passed me up in height. Uh, I'm not happy about this. But I'm take that Buddhist attitude and I'm gonna let it, let it go. 
Um, I do to the prayer concern. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I also do want to note that before the service started, um, she told me before I would know when the doxology was to come because it would be um, when I saw the Ackermans with a giant snake, and then it would be my time. And as a male with high blood pressure and cholesterol, and your pastor says, when you see the Ackermans with a giant snake, it'll be your time. <laughs> I was honestly a little concerned towards the end of the video. I thought, I'm good. Okay. Um, and by the way, Rich, it is uh, Opal. 24 year anniversaries are Opal. So you have time now, today. Opal. All right, offertory prayer. Um, we're doing a little differently. Obviously, the offer offering's been up in the uh, vestibule. So I will give the, the offertory prayer and then kind of play something and then come up. And yeah. Dear Lord, we thank you for another chance for us to meet together in your house to worship you. We experience your blessings every day. Your blessings are always given to us freely and with ultimate love. May we love you enough to give you what is already yours. Bless these tithes and offerings today. Amen. our time together in prayer and those of you on zoom I think I've worked it out so I can see if you're putting prayer concerns in the chat um, if not forgive us forgive me friends let us pray remembering there is a prayer like a wide river it never ends does not begin around the world it's always flowing and we are stepping in Flow today, God, around all who need your love, around all who are traveling inwardly and outwardly. Open unexpected doors and place in their path strangers who will become friends. We ask your blessing, especially upon those in our hearts who need your special care. And Teresa and her daughters, on Vicki and Mike, on those in nursing and senior facilities, Jane, Mary Ellen, Betty, Florence, Julia, Bill, and Gail. People throughout the world experiencing earthquakes, fires, political unrest, and the drumbeat of war, especially Haiti and Afghanistan, and those in the paths of major storms. With the World Council of Churches today, we pray for Cameroon, the Central African Republic, and Equatorial Guinea. And God, there are those who are still deep in our hearts, whose names are known to you that we lift now. And we include the family and friends of Reverend Suzanne Webb, who died on Friday night, and all those others who are deep in our hearts. We bring them before you, hold them in the light of your love, and pray to you as Jesus taught us, saying to you, our maker, our mother, and our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we go forth from here, I will remind you that in this uh, Delta variant time, it is a little bit safer to gather in the dining room than the narthex, and it is even safer to gather outside. So if you want to be community together, which I do hope that you do, 
those are some options that will mitigate the risk. And as you move into the journey of your life, may you love the journey as a spiritual act, always expanding your horizons, inviting you to travel beyond your preconceptions, and encouraging you ever to embrace the infinite delight of God's earth and its beings. And may the creator continue your unfolding, the Christ accompany your deeper knowing, and the spirit enliven your growing until one day we all gather in the kingdom of love. Go in peace and joy.